Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a journey, it's a full moon today, and I wanna see what the spirit realm has to share with us for this August full moon. So I'm gonna go ahead and relax here and we'll see what comes. Okay. So, I'm in a structure, and the structure is very thin. I mean, you could say it's made out of leaves even, like I'm hiding in the leaves, but it actually feels like kind of a rounded house, very small, thin, like I'm inside of a haystack or something. But the colors are very dark, 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 dark green, almost black. And I'm trying to move these leaves out of the way and come out of this leaf pile. <laughs> it really does feel like a little home though, too. But I'm also, in a way, I'm moving this out of the way, but I'm also kind of not ready yet. So I'm making it appear as though I'm ready to come out, but I'm kind of doing it in a, in a way that I'm not just jumping out of these leaves and saying, I'm ready now. I'm just moving them out of the way and sort of like, well, I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out of here, but I just can't get out of here. So the attempt isn't really honest. And instead of just making the honest choice, which is just get out of the leaf pile already, I'm pretending to try to get out of the leaf pile, but I'm still hiding inside. And there's sunlight way out there that's trying to reach me. And there's a canopy of trees and all this dark green is kind of in the way of the light, but there are still streams of light that reach, reach this pile. And I'm still inside of it. And it's interesting because they're showing me that this pile has a representation of how I feel on the inside. So I'm hiding in a pile and there's a pile <laughs> inside of me, <laughs> I guess too. So let's see what we can understand about this. <laughs> My spare guys are kind of smiling at me and they're asking me, okay, so what is the pile inside of you, Abby? <laughs> what is the parallel we're making here? Can you clarify that? And I say, okay, I'm gonna figure out what the pile is. So whatever's on the outside that we're creating in our reality is also paralleled reflection to what we're dealing with on the inside. The question is, are you aware? Can you see what's going on inside of you? Well, if you're not sure what's going on inside of you, take a look at your life. And when you start looking at your life, now you can start to see some more details that you can work on inside yourself in order to change what is the outside experience. But if you're not being honest with yourself or honest with the way things are on the outside, then it's gonna be a lot harder to find out truly what is inside yourself. So deep down honesty, being honest with yourself, honest with what you're really doing. Are you actually trying to get out of this leaf pile or are you just, making a very meager and pathetic attempt and saying that you're trying. <laughs> so um, something to think about there. But let me see in this situation here that we're looking at for this August full moon. Um, let's see if I can find out what this means as um, the reflection on the inside. Okay, let's see, see what I can find out here. Okay, so, so there's something about... Um, what would be, so this is a, a journey for us all. This is all something we can all learn from together. So when I say I, I mean the experience, okay? So, so I'm experiencing that I'm hiding inside myself and I am wanting or trying to make more of a bold attempt to um, be more present, but I'm hesitant, I'm afraid, I'm resisting coming out and in a way I should be more compassionate of the person in the image 
more compassionate because they are making an attempt. They are making a, a bit of a, a, a rustling um, attempt to get out, but they're working on something inside themselves that is challenging them. So they don't have the strength or the confidence to just jump out of the pile because they're still kind of stuck in a pile inside themselves and they're not jumping um, to to express themselves either. So there's something having to do with self-expression here and fear of self-expression or confidence of self-expression. I mean, you get to decide, do you want to express yourself confidently or are you uncomfortable expressing yourself confidently? So if you're uncomfortable, you're working on fear. What would make you uncomfortable to express yourself? Is it the way other people are going to feel about you? Is what they might think about you? It's what they might say? Sometimes we analyze other people and we say they're not ready to hear that. So I don't want to express myself too boldly. And now we're kind of boxing ourselves in based on, you know, other people's issues. So it's complicated, right? Let's see what this was. What, let's see what happens next here. So my spirit guides want me to kind of stay in there when it comes to um, hiding inside myself type of experience. And hiding inside myself feels safe. And I'm sort of creating a layer of safety so I can... Um, it's almost like process whatever this is with just me. With just myself. It's an interesting experience because there's love in here. I feel like I, I feel the experience of I want to process this in a loving environment within myself. And I don't want to share it. I don't want to express it out there. I just want to deal with it inside of me. So now I'm creating a barrier from people and from life and from experiences in order to hold this concept inside myself in order to process it in a place of love. But the question is, can't this world be a place of love? So what is the difference between the, the world that is our inner inner essence and the world that is our world. So what happens when we aren't afraid to be our inner essence in the world and that the world is a safe place? And now we don't have to create barriers between what is inside and how we want to express this on the outside. There's something here. There's some sort of concept here. Are we ready yet for this as a human race? Are we, are we ready to just be us? Whatever is in your inner world, um, is it truly safe to put that out there? I think there's a million different things going on in people's inner worlds. And some of us could say that is very inappropriate. And you, you're off on your logic there. You're off on your thinking. You're off on your processing. And if you bring that out into the world, you're going to create corruption or you're going to create deception or you're going to create. So now there's judgment. There's always going to be judgment. <laughs> so how do we come to a world where we're speaking in a supportive manner instead of in a, a demand or a judgmental or... Hmm. But how do we work together is the other thing. How do we actually work together? How do we become better listeners of each other? And how do we express ourselves? How do we work through communication challenges? I mean, this is again hiding in the bush, hiding in the haystack, hiding inside yourself. But what is it that you are, you're not ready to just really say, ta-da, this is what is going on here. So... This is the message that the spirit realm is sharing with me, is sharing with all of us about this concept of self-expression and communication and the difference between the boundary of our inner world and the outer world. And when you think about being um, an infinite soul, okay, like um, I'm at the highest dimensional realms, I'm part of the source energy, we're just fully in oneness so there isn't any barrier there's nothing separating my soul from another soul or etc it's just we're all in this 
water um, this pool of the source together. But as we go into different dimensional experiences, we get to experience different ways of being, different ways of feeling separated or connected, different ways of experiencing fear, um, self-expression. <laughs> Life has uh, got all types of avenues when you're in this earth plane, doesn't it? But when you're in source, it's okay. You can be you can be completely free. But there's so many strings attached here. And what is human ascension if... <sighs> human ascension to me is the world continuing to work on itself and open more doorways of love. Less strings needing to be attached. A more warm and supportive environment. And the more love and support is in the environment, the more we begin to trust each other again. The more we come out of our homes and we actually hang out with our neighbors again. The more our kids can come outside and there's no fear of them being taken anymore. It starts to change things. We become natural people again. Become whole and warm and it's okay to have feelings. Feelings of sadness because you can express those to people and people can understand and they can hug you. That's what a human ascension reality is to me. And these are just some of the ideas that I'm ex I'm experiencing while I'm exploring this haystack, but it's very dark, dark green. It might as well be a bush or a pile of leaves or something. But let's see what happens next here. So my spirit guides are saying, so... Um, okay, so here's the message, right, that I'm expressing expressing this message about community and love and support of each other. And what is it to talk about this? And what is it to actually create this? How do we inspire human beings to start actually physically working together to create something that they are thinking about on the inside? Now then they're, they're putting it out there into the world actually putting it out there as an idea. An idea, a bandwagon, we're going to try this out and see what happens. I, it kind of makes me think about how a lot of people like to um, talk negatively about the government. People in the government are people too, okay? They're just doing a job and there's different levels of what doing a job is all about. And there's a lot of rules, a lot of rule books, and processes are slowing down more and more and more because we don't want to offend anybody. We got to protect ourselves from a legal um, issue where now I'm, share I'm having to pay out millions of dollars because of one um, accidental thing that is uh, misrepresented or hurt somebody's feeling or whatever. So everything is starting to slow down. There's more rules now. We gotta keep protecting ourselves. We gotta hide the truth because people aren't ready for it. On and on and on and on and on. So if that's going on with society, okay, society, well, what can we, there's billions of us, we're just the regular people that, that do the regular day-to-day -day life what can we do to support each other in our communities, to support um, children and education? And what can we do? You know, I went and visited Juneau, Alaska, and they have one of the coolest playgrounds out there I've ever seen. And the people in the community are the ones that made that happen. The people in the community did it. So if we can get people in the community together, to actually support projects of this kind. Imagine having amazing playgrounds to take your kids to where they're enormous and they're fun and they're magical and they're surreal. And all, a lot of kids are there, a lot of experiences to be had. And there's wonderful uh, like shaded picnic tables for adults to hang out. And, um, and who knows what can, can start to develop there. I'm sure there's a lot of people with, um, with those trucks that like to make tacos and things that, that now are showing up. And it starts to become a bit of a community affair. 
And it's beautiful. It's people coming together. And it's people working together. And now it doesn't matter what's going on with the government or society or any of that. We're moving the direction away from what is inside of us and the grumbling and the fears and the pointing fingers. And I'm trying, but I'm really not. To now, in this idea here, is we're making a step to work together to create a warm environment where our hearts are healing and there's no more hurt that we have to carry anymore. We can do it, you know? We don't have to ask the government to do it for us. We can do it for the government. We can do it for each other. And the more we create this type of beauty here, as generations pass, they're going to be inspired to create beauty too because they're going to learn from us. And we're going to learn from our choices and our actions and what we tried to create for them, to create a better world for them. So this, this is quite a message here, quite a lot of perspectives. Just simply talking about communication. You either do it or you don't. You have to ask yourself, what are you ready for, you know? But what is holding you back? Things to ask yourself. And my spirit guides ask me if I, in this image where we have this, this, it's very dark, dark green. Everything is pretty much dark green and, and it's in the shadow of darkness, okay? So that's why it's so dark in here. Even under the canopy of the trees, it's so dark. And only threads of light um, stream through, just threads of light. And they're asking me if I feel that this is a true representation of the earth, that there's just a dark canopy here and only threads of light are actually reaching us. And a lot of us are overwhelmed by the world, so we're hiding in our haystacks. And how are we going to be received by, how are we going to receive those threads of light when we're not even allowing the light in, let alone each other? We're not even allowing the light in. But they want to know if I feel that this is a representation of Earth today. Let me see what comes comes here. You guys can think about it too. I mean, they're asking you as well. So me is you, is us, is we. <laughs> We're all in oneness here. Okay, so. Okay, do you feel like this is a representation of the earth today? <sighs> hmm. Well, um, as I'm trying to decide my answer, I am going into uh, my own daydream, okay? So I daydream that I am one of these in the haystack, the bush. And then I'm coming out and I touch this thread of light. And I'm looking around and I'm starting to see that many people um, aren't exactly hiding anymore. And there are people coming out to actually touch the thread of light and the, to, make, um, to make a connection with light. And then I see that the light touches my hand and then it goes into my hand. My hand becomes light and it goes into my arm and um, my body, my mind, I become light and I start to glow. And now I see the other humans that have the courage to come out um, and touch this light are starting to glow now too. So we become little suns, um, miniature suns, but we're human beings and we're glowing with light and it's bringing security to others um, and safety that is giving them the strength and the courage to come out from their own hiding so they too can um, develop this relationship with light and love. And it's very special when it comes from other human beings. Not just the spirit realm, but from other human beings. It's very special. So I say that, I suppose in my um, version of an answer, I feel that um, you could say yes to this, but I, but I like um, to say no. <laughs> Because it's not just the light streaming through the canopy, it's all the sunlight that's actually beneath the canopy that is coming from us. It's coming from us. So, something to be aware of there, something to think about, a new perspective of it all. And 
more at the surface of myself, not going so deep here. Um, I'm not somebody who chooses to see that the earth is shielded from love or light because it's always accessible. We are love and light. So either we're shielding ourselves from ourself or we're not. But the more self-aware you become, the, the less shielded you are from yourself, which is your higher self. So one time in my life, I, it's just a memory is coming back to me. I had this wild idea. So um, I see in people's energy fields what they are resisting. And so I can see that people hide in shells, their hearts are, are in a shell, um, different things um, in order to create safety. And it's not true safety, it's illusion. Because you're either yourself or you're dishonest. <laughs> and the more deep we go into who am I, then the more these shells we break down and we actually start to discover who we really are. Not based on what we have been trained to be or think that we are, but to actually discover who we are, which goes beyond anything else that anything in this world has ever expressed to us. Because you got to figure this one out for yourself. Because only you can know who you are. And you, only you can find you. So the idea was... Um, this is the memory that comes to me is I, I had this experience where I was breaking down this dark rock layer around a heart. And as I was breaking down this dark rock layer, I started to think about what if the earth um, is a heart? And if we are paralleling with the earth energies and literally paralleling with so many things. So if the earth is, earth is a heart, if our hearts are covered in a black rock, um, why wouldn't the earth's heart also be covered in a black rock? Because we're creating, um, we're manifesting from our own hearts with a fear. Okay? So we're manifesting then fear and we're manifesting more of a canopy because of our own fears without even realizing it. Because energy is a powerful thing. Whether you can see it or you can't see it, it creates it does materialize experiences. It really does. And it encourages, it attracts things. So fear attracts more fear, okay? So now we have negative entities and other crap, you know? <laughs> energy garbage that we, we, we just, we're, we've got it. We've got energy garbage, we share energy garbage. We get pissed off and we get lost in our minds and more spews out and, you know, it's going out with the trash every week too. And it's all over the place. But it also isn't. Because when we start to, to alter our dimensional connection, alter our stance or vibrational relationship with reality or creative forces, um, I'm choosing to live in a world where people are working on each other. And all of that energy junk is actually just being digested by the love of all. And so the fear that is wrapped around the heart is, our, is merely just exactly what it needs to be to learn the lesson. And then once the lesson is learned, then it just disappears. And any type of fears that we're manifesting out there to attract more fear-based lear learning is only dissolving in the light of all as we continue to work on accessing our own heart. So in time, there is it, it hasn't happened yet. It is happening, and it, it happened. So that is actually time all happening at the same time. So the Earth never had a black um, canopy around it. It is developing one and it and then it had one. Or we could say the human race um, was always in love, is in love, and forever will be in love with itself and with creative forces. Um, we can live in any timeline, you know. We can live in any version of a reality we want to. I can live in a totally different dimension than you, but yet we can see each other as though we live in the same place. But the vibrational frequency that I'm pulling in and, and I'm choosing to participate is a different version of Earth than you. <laughs> Even though it appears we're on the same planet. Because I'm attracting my own learning through choosing to let go of my fears and attract more love into my life, which is the Earth I'm choosing to live on. 
there there always has been love here. There there is love too, and there forever will be love. And it's not that we had it, we always have had it. So you see this very complex conversation is is what truth is all about. Everything has a truth to it. Every version of an answer is actually the correct answer. But then you have to ask yourself, well, why is that my answer? Why is that what I choose to see? So sometimes if you choose to see, yeah, the world is covered in a black canopy and the the darkness is here and there and we're we can't be set free. We need to hide so that it doesn't find us, it doesn't get us, it doesn't destroy our life. You know, you, you could say yes and your yes could be because of this. But now you're starting to understand yourself. So you live in a world of darkness where you're hiding and afraid of darkness. So how do you choose to face your fears? Because that's your life lesson is to face your fears. This is about you. This is in the end is all about you and your choices. So, you got to ask yourself, why, why do you choose to believe in what you believe in? And what is it that you are resisting or what is it that you are embracing? Um, and you might find a bunch of different answers. And some days you will ask this question, how do you feel today? Well, I feel great but I also don't feel great. Well, I feel awesome today and I feel awesome because of these great things, but I guess I also don't because of this. So the answer to the question of how do you feel today is what exactly? Is like a hundred different things. I feel a hundred different ways today. <laughs> and all of them in a way are correct. It's all about getting to know you through the way that you choose to experience and believe in the world and your own feelings and your relationship with those feelings. And in the end, this message is all about communication and perception, perspectives. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna close my eyes and I just wanna see if there's anything else. Hmm. Okay, so they're showing me the one that was in the bush that I, I had been experiencing as myself. Um, it actually looks like old grass, a big pile of old grass. Uh, and um, I can see it more clearly as that. And I see a person coming out and they feel very confused about where they have been for so long. And oddly enough, this grass is like a cocoon. And in that cocoon state, they were um, experience, uh, experiencing a lot of different ideas that were very influential. And those ideas created choices that lasted lifetimes. And now the time is com has come full circle, come to completion. And now the person is coming out of the cocoon and saying, whoa, where have I been? It was like I was being, I was in some weird, uh, illusion, new illusionary pod, and I got carried away with some choices and some ideas, and now I'm just wondering why did I do that? <laughs> and it feels like 10,000 years have passed from the day that this one went hiding, this one lost itself in hiding, and this one chose to come back out again, which you could define as a cycle of our human evolution is going into hiding, finding your fears in hiding, facing those fears or running away from those fears and creating a thousand lifetimes or whatever. And then coming to a point where you say, I'm so tired of fear. I just want a world of love. And now suddenly none of that stuff really matters because you're coming out and you're saying, I want love, I am love, and what was I doing this whole time? Hiding under my blanket, hiding under this grass pile. And now our human race has gone through a cycle and we're ready for something new, which is bright and beautiful and welcoming. 
and it's interesting because they're showing me the canopy wasn't made out of leaves it was made out of birds and they're all blackbirds and the birds are all flying away and the trees look barren and the sunlight shines down and there's a lot of confusion about this very long sleep and all the birds that are now flying away but the sunlight is reaching the trees down into its roots and the trees are being activated in a new way and they're starting to grow and communicate and the experience of communication with nature is on a whole new level of sound and processing and I almost feel now as I watch this person and I experience being this person I feel as though I am a tree I'm one of these trees and my leaves are coming back to me and the sunlight is hitting me at my roots and I'm feeling healed and I feel like I can grow taller now. And my spirit guides are kind of showing me something cool about, I was talking about all that energy garbage and the earth loves um, to digest things and transform it into like fertile soil, you know? So all of this energy stuff that we've been processing, lots of energy garbage in a way, all this fear and pukey stuff and I'm running away and I'm not I'm afraid and I feel really gross having to face this thing it all feels really energetically pukey right um, but it's the best f f um, fertilizer <laughs> for when you're on the other side of it and you're starting to own your own light it's the best fertilizer all that junk and crap that you went through is the best fertilizer for helping you to grow really big and tall really fast so that's that's all that's all I have to say about this. It's really a it's like a new life. It's like a new reality coming out of that grass pile. It's like a like I fell asleep for 10,000 years and had a really jacked up dream. And then I just woke up and I'm like where am I? Oh, I remember this place. Whoa, what are all these blackbirds? All the trees are barren. And something is changing. Something is singing. The, the sunlight is upon me. And I feel like I'm growing. I feel like I'm absorbing it. I feel the warmth deep into my roots. I feel new. I feel different. It's like the rebirth of the human race. The rebirth of the earth. The rebirth. It's cool. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I hope you enjoyed this message for our August full moon. Thank you so much for watching. If any of you are interested in connecting with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all again. I hope you all have a wonderful day.